Welcome back to episode 3 of our walk around historic Swanage. It's a lovely sunny November day and we've travelled about a mile out of the main town of Swanage now and come up to the cliff top to Durston Country Park. This is a 280 acre country park and nature reserve. There's a few mine shafts here where the local Purbeck stone was quarried and we'll see one of these later. We're coming up to Durston Castle, which is a folly really, built by a local businessman, George Burt, who owned this land in the 1880s. It's now a visitor centre and cafe. An interesting historical note is that the castle played a part in the evolution of radio and telecommunications. A team of Marconi's engineers used the roof of the castle in the 1890s for some of their early wireless experiments to transmit to the Isle of Wight, which we'll see a bit later on. We'll see the Isle of Wight, that is, not the experiments. If you saw the first episode of these historic Swanage walks, you might remember that I talked about the bollards from London that came to Swanage. We'll hear some more of them coming up. Tillywim Caves and the lighthouse to the right. We're going left first of all. This stone chart shows the south coast of England where we're standing. If we look out to sea, the next land over the horizon is the northern coast of France, about 75 miles away. We'll walk on down this path to see something that you don't see every day on a coastal path. Here we are arriving at the Great Globe. What a fantastic view. You can see more of London's transplanted bollards surrounding the globe. George Burt, who had Durston Castle built you'll remember, also commissioned this globe. It was constructed in Greenwich in 1887 and brought to Swanage by sea. The globe measures 10 feet in diameter and weighs 40 tonnes. It's made of Portland stone and consists of 15 segments with four stones for each of the lower three courses and three in the topmost course. The segments are connected by granite dowels. You can see the surface of the globe is carved in detail and lettered to show the continents, oceans and the main countries. At the base is a tablet recording distances between stars and planets. At the back and sides there's a series of panels with quotations from the Bible. Shakespeare, Tennyson, Virgil and others. It was erected by a local builder, William Hardy, in 1887 on a platform cut into the solid rock of the hill. The globe sits here, 136 feet above sea level. This is a great record of how the Victorians saw the world and the universe. We'll take a walk now down this path to the wall in front of us. You can see my shadow again as the sun is low in the sky in November. In the middle there is Peveril Point and Swanage Bay that we saw in the previous video. Beyond that is Ballard Down, with old Harry Rocks jutting out to the sea. And beyond that we can see the apartment blocks and offices of Bournemouth. A great view that, I think. If we pan out to sea, we can see the cruise liners that are moored up due to Covid. And if we zoom in, we can see the Isle of Wight that I mentioned previously, when Marconi was conducting early experiments with wireless. Some of the first ever wireless signals were generated in Durston Castle behind us and received on the Isle of Wight over there. Imagine how those engineers must have felt when their experiment worked for the first time. They might even have cracked open a bottle of champagne over the great globe, which would have been shiny and new then. History comes to life in front of us.
We'll leave the Great Globe behind us and walk off westwards. It's a sheer drop down there. It's a bit blowy today, but nowhere near as windy as it could be. Still a bit of a swell in the water though. The path that we're on is part of the southwest coastal path. This runs from Port Harbour, which is a few miles behind us, all the way around the coast of southwest England to Minehead in Somerset. 630 miles, but don't worry, we're not doing it all today. Dolphins and porpoises can sometimes be seen in these waters. The best time of year is spring and autumn. The hut coming up is the Dolphin Watch Hut, where you can sit and gaze out to sea. Morning. Here's another view of the sea. Think of all the energy stored up in that water. I'm sure in years to come we'll find efficient ways to use that energy to generate some of the power that we need to live our lives. This first part of the southwest coastal path along the Dorset coast and into Devon is called the Jurassic Coast. This is a World Heritage Site the first wholly natural World Heritage Site to be designated in the UK. The Jurassic Coat is important because the rock strata found here is incredibly varied and covers 185 million years of geological history. This is why, if you come to Swanage, you're very likely to bump into a group of students who are here on a geology field trip as part of their studies. The many sedimentary layers are rich with fossils Regular coastal landslips expose new fossils. Dinosaur skeletons and footprints have been discovered over the years, some of which are now in the Natural History Museum in London. Here's the view back up the path that we've just walked. The Great Globe is behind that headland. We're coming up now to one of the quarry shafts that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. This is the entrance to Tillywim Caves. As you can see it's now closed because it's unsafe. This was a working quarry in the 1700s and into the early part of the 1800s. Purbeck stone was quarried here. Using only hand tools, the quarrymen mined the stone horizontally out of the cliff face. Stone was winched down from the ledge to waiting barges. The boats either shipped the stone directly to the stone yards on Swanage Quay, or transferred them to large sailing catches anchored offshore. This was obviously not a job for a windy day. The caves haven't been quarried since 1812. In 1887, the same year that the globe was installed, Tillywim Caves opened as a tourist attraction. Durston was an early theme park. This shaft was completed to give visitors access to the caves. This runs down to the large ledge, which would have been the original entrance to the caves where the Purbeck stone was quarried. This was still open when I was young, and we could walk down this shaft into Tillywim Caves and come out on the ledge below. The caves were closed to the public completely in 1976 due to a rockfall making the caves too dangerous to enter. We'll continue along the coastal path towards the lighthouse. 
The walls along the edge of the path are dry stone walls. Because the ground under our feet is basically stone, there's no shortage of Purbeck stones. Dry stone walls are the traditional way to divide up land round here into fields. You don't see so many hedges or fences. The lighthouse coming up in front of us was built in 1881. It's positioned to give a waypoint for vessels passing along the English Channel coast. It's still operational today. Some of the cottages have been refurbished as holiday cottages. But you won't find a friendly lighthouse keeper there if you visit. The lighthouse has been automated since 1991. We've come to the end of our three walks around historic Swanage. I hope you've enjoyed them and learnt something interesting along the way. If you have, please subscribe to our channel to see more similar videos and others out in the countryside and our travels abroad. Thanks for watching.